Hi everybody. I'm gonna get rid of this thing at the top of my my uh what is it? A phone. <laughs> Hi, thanks for joining me. It is Friday night, so I don't know if anybody's home. Um, but if you are, I hope I hope you're tuning in. Um, I'm here today with my friend Mandala Rose, who is uh, an actress that I met two years ago at Outfest. Uh, I think it was two years ago. Yeah, it was two years ago. And, and we just sort of got to know each other over the last two years, and I had an opportunity to um, ask her to be in a, something I was doing recently, and we'll talk about that later, but, uh, but I'm just now in love with her because she's so talented. And I'm really excited because she's also going to be a crazy bitch in the new web series. So uh, stay tuned for more information on that. Hi, everybody. Um, and you started something that was a web series that's now a feature, right? That's correct. Uh, it's called Forever Not Maybe. So it actually started out as La Delua Excuse. But that as was. What? Yeah, exactly. We changed the name because it was just too difficult. <laughs> so it's now Forever Not Maybe. And, and tell us about it. So For those I, people who don't know. I play a character called uh, Sasha, and she's actually from LA, so I do not have my Ameri uh, my Australian accent. Oh. Um, and Can you do that on command? Uh, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> actors okay. hate it when you put them on the spot yeah. like that. I'm teasing you. That was total tease. Okay, sorry. Um, and I play a lighting director um, who meets a touring concert pianist from Corsica called Elizabeth and they fall in love and the feature follows their story over a span of um, a number of years um, working in a very male orientated industry yeah, yeah. following their love story um, and also their long distance relationship as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's Corsica probably where the the stress comes in, right? The yeah. long distance thing? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys, some of you might have had experience with that. I've definitely done long distance. And uh, that's, it's hard. I've not. Oh, you haven't no, really? I've never done long distance in my life. No. Well, so you really, when you came from Australia, you just came from Australia. Oh, okay, no, I was in a... <laughs> 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 so apparently it doesn't work. Uh, see? <laughs> okay. Now the truth comes out. Oh, hey, Janae, and Susan and Roxanne. Hi, you guys. Um, and anybody else who's watching, hi. Uh, um, so what brought you from Australia? That's a really, really big, I mean, that's a big move. Huge move. Huge move. So I, my feature All About E that we shot in Sydney um, came to Outfest in 2015. And it was there that I met Chrissy and we became fast friends and she was writing a web series and thought which coming out actor or which actor you know is doing well that she has her hands on that she can you know actually use and ended up getting a visa and coming out here straight away for that oh is that you came out for the I came out for forever, forever not, not maybe, maybe. Yeah. oh i didn't know that uh you know um so that's been in the making for a while now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well i mean that's the way it goes with independent projects it just takes a long time to keep them funded and uh, moving forward so I completely get that um, and what was all about E? you know I have to admit that I, I I'm sorry I haven't seen it mm -hmm. but uh, you know I've heard really good things about it I have I've heard really good things about it but I just at I, least you're honest yeah <laughs> I am um, that yeah what about it? Yeah, How's tell me it about doing? it. I don't even know what it is. I mean, so, it's a road trip, right? It is. It's pretty much a road trip. So I play a character called... Hi, Pat. How are you? Oh, Pat. Hi. <laughs> um, I play a character called Elmira, E for short. She's a DJ. Lebanese background, not out to her very strict Lebanese parents. Right. Um, she's kind of a bit of a party girl, being a DJ, um, ends up ruining the relationship with the love of her life and stumbles, you know, life just goes kind of shit after that. Um, stumbles across a bag of money with her best friend. As you Matt, did. Yes. And they go on the run, which is the road trip part. Okay. And when she goes to get help from all of her past lovers, they all kind of slam the door in her face because yeah. she's a bit of a bad girl. So she decides to go get the help of the love, the love uh. of her life. 
Trish. And so it's kind of like them meeting each other again yeah. after a year and it's a, it's a, it's a story of uh, kind of finding yourself and growing up and going on that journey. Yeah. The romantic? Romantic, yeah. 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 Sounds good. I guess if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's on Netflix, I believe. Is it? Yes. I, I would imagine. Or in iTunes, maybe, and yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that did really well in the festival circuit, too, didn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, what have you enjoyed about life in L.A.? Uh, what have I enjoyed? Um, L.A. is wonderful. L.A. is, um, what have I enjoyed? Meeting people. I finally just moved in, well, moving into my first place. So, a resident, finally. Um, the thing I love about LA is the fact that it's actually very similar to my hometown. So, I'm from a little place called Adelaide in South Australia. I love and that name. I, it Adelaide. sounds so pretty. I don't know why. <laughs> we have wonderful wine and oh, really? beautiful yeah. beaches. And yeah. you can walk from one side of the city to the other in like an hour. Wow, so, yeah. it's really small. It's really small. Um, but the heat here in LA is very similar to the heat back in Adelaide, very dry. Kind of. um, but I love the fact that LA, you can just go for a drive and feel as though you're in nature. Yeah. And that's, that's really, really beautiful. Yeah, that's true. And lucky. Yeah. It is. It really is. I mean, there's, you know, I mean, people do make a big deal about, oh, you can go to the mountains and you can ski and you can go to the ocean, but nobody really does it. But there are a lot of really great parks here. Um, do you have any particular character types of roles you'd like to play? I do. <laughs> yeah? I really love to play like the kick-ass, badass women. Oh the, no! <laughs> the, the strong protagonist, the the one who yeah. can pretty much do anything that a guy can do yeah. because we can. Well, um, I just wrote her a very opposite of them. <laughs> very opposite. <laughs> but I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah. Something different. Yeah. Because I do get stereotyped is that, um, kind of badass character. Yeah, you know, I think that's so funny. I mean, in all honesty, I mean, I, I obviously, I only know what I know over the last couple of years, but I would never think of casting you as a badass character. Really? Yeah, I don't that's know why. Cool. I, like I don't. I don't know why. I made her a really girly, you know, feminine, <laughs> kind of shy girl. <laughs> oh, well. Um, mm. Why? Why what? Why do, why do you I like, like those kind yeah, of yeah. characters? Um, I like those characters, and I guess it would be because of, I mean, it probably stems from my past and the fact that um, I didn't have a great childhood, and so any opportunity I can to really be someone who is powerful and be someone who who can in control. be in control completely, yeah. that is what I love about that. I actually did a self tape yesterday for a fighter pilot. Oh wow! Oh, oh that's yes. good. That would You're be so fun. tiny, though. I mean, I guess some fighter pilots would be tiny, wouldn't they? Well, to fit in the cockpit. I, I don't know. Height. Anybody know that answer? Um, yeah. So that's why I like to yeah. the badass women. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really interesting. Not to go too deep, but you have had a very um, sort of insecure childhood, and so seeking the opportunity to play somebody that's really, you know, take charge and control in the power. Um, that must, I, I can see that that would feel really good for you. Definitely. Totally get that. Um, well, it's, you know, it's also interesting because I, I did cast you in Don't Come Over, and Don't Come Over is the virtual reality project that I'm uh, in post on right now, and some of you know about it, some of you don't. Uh, but Mandela plays a character who is being uh, tortured and chased and slowly killed and the complete opposite of somebody who's in control. Uh, so I do apologize now in retrospect for completely uh, casting you opposite, but, no, but she great. does an amazing job and I have to say as an actor you're sort of fearless. So even though it wasn't, um, you know, the character wasn't in control, you were very powerful because you were fearless in your uh, approach to the character, you know. Um, it's she, ba basically she's in a state of terror through most of the movie, and that's a really hard thing to maintain from an emotional place as an actor. You know, what was that experience like for you? If, if that's not what you like to play, what was that like? It was interesting. I do remember going home feeling pretty exhausted. Yeah. But also, it's it's kind of it is fun. It is a lot of fun to get out of that 
that comfort zone that I do like to play those stronger characters. Um, so to have played that and to feel... I think the thing that I love most about that character was the fact that I actually had to put myself there and think, what would it be like? How would I feel if I was actually in this? And it was different as well because of course virtual reality and the fact that it was me acting from the head down yeah. was kind of cool as well. Yeah. So in a way, because of that, it felt slightly disconnected from... But you also had that intense scene in the mirror where you are 100%. That is true. I mean, it's... Uh, uh, oh, for Christy, Rachel, <laughs> Bibi and Janet. Hey, you guys. Hey. <laughs> Bob keeps holding up the signs to let us know who's, who's tuning in. But... Um, but, I, you know, I, I was, I, I just think that being the victim can be a very uh, emotionally draining thing. Oh, and Jen. Hey. Hi, Jen. Um, and I just thought that you maintained it so well. I was kind of getting worried about you for a while. I was like, oh, this is just too long. And then she was in a tub for hours. She was in a cold tub. And, oh. The standing camera in the, yeah. and the thing, and then standing in the closet forever with your shirt off in front of like, I was, the whole I was, crew. I was pretty much just yeah. in my bottoms, but I mean that yeah. was also my own choice because right. it was blood. Because there was a lot of blood. Ooh. Oh, that's an interesting question. Describe Jane's directing. Say something nice. I am gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, the virtual the virtual reality show was our first together. Yeah. Um. And how I found your directing is, I enjoy the fact that you don't tell, me, like you, you didn't tell me how I should act or how I should. I mean, it's not that I had any lines anyway, but how I should do a certain way. Um, how, how do you describe someone's directing? I enjoyed it. That's that's. <laughs> I enjoyed it. That's. <laughs> um, and I think I think because of. The virtual reality shoot was something I've never done before. Um, so I actually look forward to working with you on yeah. Crazy Bitches so that I can get a sense of yeah. how you direct in other ways as well. Of course, we did do that reading too. The most rewarding part of my career. Um, the entire thing is rewarding, but the most rewarding part is being able to go on set and actually meeting people and being able to portray characters that that can be inspirational to anyone. I mean, it doesn't have to be young girls, it doesn't have to be women, it can be men as well. Um, but being able to tell a story that could touch someone's heart or touch someone in a way that they didn't expect. Um, and that's what I love most about my career, is being able to kind of give that message or help others through something that, that perhaps they aren't ready to deal with themselves but inadvertently are able to because of the story if that makes sense so it's meeting people and, and the characters that I get to play is incredibly rewarding yeah. have you heard from fans who have you know said I saw you in this movie and it changed I have. my life I, or it... I still get messages from all of like about all of that from all of that yesterday for example I actually got a oh, message wow. from a fan and saying that um, she found it to be very inspirational and that she can see myself inspiring many people in the future and she oh. looks forward to my career. So That's it's really, really nice, nice, really nice and sweet to hear messages yeah. like that and I endeavour to actually reply back to them. That's good, you should. Yeah, there's no reason. Exactly. I mean, I think at some point you get, you know, you know, people get to a point where there's just no time because there's, the fan base is so huge, but mm. I kind of feel like this is now, this is the time to connect. Talk about our next project. Um, well, together, obviously, the next project is Crazy which is the web series, which I just started raising money for today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, we're shooting it in October, and it's based on Crazy Bitches the feature. Um, but it's set at a really high end spa, and uh, Benzola plays. T tell them who you play. So I play. Can I say the name? Yeah. A character called Pandora. And she is a YouTube influencer. Inf influence. Influencer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and sh <laughs> not like any character I've played before, so I'm very much looking forward to that. 
Well, and let's be honest, you did say it, because I said to her, if I, if I was I, writing this, what would you, what kind of character would people not expect you to play? And I said the girliest, girly and, yeah, girly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I do aim to please when I can. Definitely. Yeah, but Pandora, Pandora is interesting because I think that she, I think that she has an arc and I think she has depth. It's going to be a fun to find, to figure out how you bring it out in ways that, you know, are the subtext of the, of the, of the lines that you're given. Because on the surface, she's very, um, she follows her friends. She, even though she's the influencer, it's by sheer luck that she fell into it. And because she's so engaging, you know, I think that a lot of times that's why people connect online, because they just have a real genuine quality to them. And um, I see her character as having that. So I think it's going to be fun. To it's figure it day. out. Yeah. And I'm going to put her in maybe even a dress. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh, oh, Pat, thank you for the CB love. <laughs> Bob's telling me that's, uh, that's, that's your doing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be a lot of fun to do, and I'm looking forward to it. We did do the, the stage reading, which was a lot of fun, too. I'm hoping something comes of that. But, yeah, um, that was fun. Yeah, that was for Outfest. But, uh... I keep looking at Bob because he's writing things and it makes me nervous. <laughs> I've also got a feature film that I'm shooting in Arizona. Um, is that the one that's supposed to go in October? Yes. Oh, hey, that Brennan. Is Brennan. Oh, Brennan. Hey. <laughs> uh, Australia is awesome. It is awesome. Um, so I'm doing a romantic drama called For the Love of Jesse, shooting mm -hmm. in October to November in Arizona. So that will be after Crazy Bitches that I'm doing that. With the same DP. With the same DP. Yeah. Yes, that is correct. It's really interesting how worlds start intertwining, don't you think? I mean, because it was, I actually first met our DP, David, because um, from Christy. Wife, oh, yeah. Is a DP for Forever, for Forever Not Maybe. Um, and then, Also a lovely DP, very talented. Yes, very. Alicia and, Robin. And then David introduced me to the director for right. The Love of Jesse and said you should. And they actually changed the character so that she's from Adelaide. Oh, wow. Which was very cool. So yeah, I don't even cool. have to change my accent. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> We're doing better now. But okay. yeah, small worlds. Small worlds. And I mean, I. So. Hi, Lisa. So I'm friends with. I'm friend, I met these guys and then Chrissy and I got to know each other and then Chrissy used Alicia for her thing. And then my friend Rainey used Alicia for her feature. Uh, Girls' Night, what is it called? Uh, sorry, Rainy, I forgot. Um, and I inadvertently met David at one of the screenings, I think for that movie. And when I was in Cannes, I ran into him at a party and we started talking. And I said, oh, I was thinking about doing this virtual reality thing. And he said, oh, I have this lens. And I was like, oh. And he's like, and your thing really works with my lens. Nothing kinky there. And uh, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how you can screw that as that, but I mean, I mean, it's like opening I walked into. But um, and then I was like, oh hey, you know, uh, I'm going to ask Mandala to play this role. And David was like, well, I know Mandala, of course I know Mandala because my wife, blah blah blah. Anyway, it all circled back around, and it's definitely a very very intertwined world, and particularly in the independent field, I think. Like we're, we're none of us are running into our friends that are doing the. You know, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. But we're gonna get there. One of us, anyway. Yeah. I, I feel like we all have a chance, right? Definitely. I mean, we're in LA. Yeah. If you were to like sort of chart your career and say, okay, in the future, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Or I want to see it go here and here and here. Oh, Winston. Winston wants to be over. Um. So, my. Since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be an actor. And my, I guess, idol is, is a very big word to use when it comes to a person. But my idol okay. is Drew it's Barrymore. Me. No, I'm mean, sorry, Jane. I mean, Jane. Is <laughs> um, Drew Barrymore. I love Drew Barrymore. Been. She's, I mean, yeah. I hope one day we get to have a beer together, maybe in a hotel. She'd probably dig it. She probably she's would. She's sober, I think. Um, After all the drugs. Lemonade, or whatever yeah. she yeah. likes. Um, but... She is going to be producing, or well, her company, I went to get down, get down. is going to be producing a new show called Black Rose. Ooh. Um, and I would like to get on that. 
um, Korea. At the moment, um, I am just auditioning for everything, self-submitting for everything, um, just trying to get my name and my face out there as much as possible because I think that's the only way really that you can get somewhere in LA is by meeting the right people. Um, and it's been, I've been here for now yeah. a year and a, a year and a half or just over a year and a half and it's really, I mean, and it's a really tough business. It really yeah. is really, really tough. Yeah. Um, it's not as, it's not as, you know, wonderful or, I can't think of that right word, but it's not as romantic or glamorous. Romantic or glamorous. Or, glamorous. Or, it's not yeah. as glamorous as people think it is. No. It's really, really hard work. But I've now finally, and Chrissy helped me a lot in thinking, in trying to wrap my head around this, is the fact that every opportunity, every audition is a chance to network and meet a casting director. Because even sure. if I'm not right for the role, or even if I don't want the role, just a chance to get in that door and, and to be seen by someone is, that's that's what the audition is yeah. for. It's not for the actual role. No, that's true. I, I used to think that way because you can go crazy if you don't, you know? If you put everything on every single role when you go in there, you can go completely crazy. Yeah. You know? Because you're not going to get every role. You're not going to get most roles. It's just the way it works, you know? Um, <laughs> Thanks, <aw>. Maggie. <laughs> she does have a pretty smile. I agree. Yeah, and I, and I feel like um, creating your own work, too, is sometimes a way to go, if that's something you're interested in. But... Or, or aligning yourself with directors who are creating work, because then they keep, then they'll keep bringing you on board future projects. Yeah. But it's really, really hard. And I mean, I, what would you say the hardest part about it is? Um, the hardest part about it is trying not to let the negativity take over. And like what do you trying, do? Um, that's a really good question because it is. I mean, a lot of creative people are we're empaths. We feel a lot, and unfortunately, whether or not it is personal, I mean, it's not personal no. at all. You take it personal because that's just what we do as humans. Um, so how do I get over it, or how do I help myself? It's you know, day by day. You take it day by day. If I have an audition, I have to now set myself up for, okay, that audition is at 12.15. I need to prepare myself for that, and then what's next after that? It's just, try not to think too much in the, in, ahead of it. Because that's when I start, to, that's when I personally start to get overwhelmed by everything. That if I do allow things to become overwhelming, that's when it's more difficult for me to be able to be like, it's okay, it's okay. Right. This is just the life, and it's not an overnight business. Chandra says, LA is a marathon, just gotta keep going. Exactly. Yeah, it That's is. What I'm Chandra doing. knows. Chandra's a very, very good first AD. Awesome. And uh, she's she's been digging in like the rest of us. And I think that that's an interesting <clears throat> aspect that people don't really talk about too, but it's about how the, you know, the crew has a lot of the same struggles. The only difference being, or one of the main differences being there's more work, and then also it's not, it's not a, not a personal judgment on things that you can't control like you're too short or you're too whatever you know you're not but you're not for you're too what I don't know you know it's like there's always yeah. those personal judgments and I, I find that a lot of people won't look past what they have on the paper so like I think that when I was auditioning you know you'd find that people would just be like this is what we're casting and this is the role and it really doesn't matter how great the actor is because they have to fit these other parameters and I think it's one of the reasons why I'm just sort of like, okay, what have I got? I'm not feeling this and I'm not getting what I need for this role. Let's open it up and see who walks in the door because there's great talent that doesn't get seen for whatever reason. And, you know, you might discover somebody really special that's just sort of laying in the background. Yeah. You know? And that's one of the hardest things about I mean, our world today, 2017, is that it doesn't actually matter if you're talented. It matters if you have social following. Yeah, that's and true. And I have heard that um, yeah, from actual producers saying that 
unfortunately nowadays because of how films are made and there's so many platforms there are four films to be shown on right. um, it is difficult to actually what about get, uh, get 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 a role if if you don't have the followers or and, yeah. and the producer even said that if they've got the followers then and they're not a great actor then they will pay for their acting lessons yeah, and that's it's, kind of a bit of a kick in the pants. It's but a, a kick in the It pants. also makes me want to work harder. Well, I mean, you know, there's two things I'll say to that, and one is I do believe that that's true. And when we were uh, talking to distributors about Crazy Bitches, we met with these guys. They took us to the Soho House for lunch, which was the best part of the meeting. Uh, do you know the Soho House? I have. I do oh. not. It's a very, very high-end, private. Yeah, I'll get that one. Yeah, it was gorgeous, um, and. They were telling me, they said, oh, you know, individually your cast members don't have a following that would be interesting to us. But grouped together, you have so many actors that grouped together, they each have a fan base that would be worthwhile. Yeah. But they didn't, but it was like, they specifically laid it out. Like our interest in your film is going to be based on the fact that you've got 22 actors and collectively they have X amount of followers. You know, and it's uh, it's artificial because I don't know how much it really matters that much in terms of selling your movie. I mean, people either are kind of like what you're doing or they don't. But I'm also of the mind that you kind of that's the game everybody's asking you to play. You kind of have to start playing it, you know. Yeah. Um, that was a hint yeah. to you. <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, no, Mandela, it's nice to think you don't have to build a following, but... <laughs> That's why I'm like, right, is now a perfect time for a selfie? Because the thing is, not unfortunately, I guess it's not unfortunately, but fans do love those selfies of your face. Yeah. And I'm not a huge selfie taker, no. I'm not really, I really don't, but I find myself being like, okay, selfie time, post it, and then you get all these likes, and it's like, god oh, damn. <laughs> But yeah. it's, that's the way the world rolls right now. It is, so you do what you do. And and in the end, there's something, I, I think that if you look at it as uh, something of power, like a power position, not in a bad way, but just that you're, if that's what people want and you're giving it to them, then you're doing a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if they want to see selfies of you in a hot tub, it doesn't cost you anything to do it, but <laughs> isn't that a nice thing to do? Yeah, so totally. it's not. It's not like it's torture. It's just torture for people who don't want to take selfies of themselves. <laughs> That's why I take pictures of mushrooms in my tree. I Did everybody see today. my mushrooms? Which oh, tree? It's out front. I'll show um, you. They're orange. It's the most uh, unreal mushroom I've ever seen in my life. Wow. It looks like a creamsicle. It's incredible. But it is a but it is a question. And and then as well, it you know it doesn't manifest or it doesn't translate unless after the project's over, the actor also then actively markets your movie on their on their pages you know what I mean like so just having the followers doesn't work you actually have to do more work to make the followers matter for the distributor yeah exactly. anyway it's a convoluted world we're living in um, but really ultimately I think we're all just trying to do what we do yeah wouldn't you say completely I mean I honestly and I hate I hate saying this because I a big believer in you know paying everybody and everybody deserves to be paid but you now my actors I was like oh my god you guys I want to do this but I have no money and they're all like cool it's okay we're there for you because all of us want to work and we want to work on good projects and you want to you know do new things and have new reel and yeah. all of that stuff and keep yourself active in the world and ultimately we really are all artists just trying to do our thing uh, it just would be nice and, and the thing if is, someday yeah. we all made a living at it. Okay. And it isn't about the money right now for yeah. me because, I mean, I've, I've been couch surfing for the past however long. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with the money. It's it's the love of it. Yeah. And I think that's that's what it should be about. Um, because you do get to meet lots of people and who knows what comes out of that. Yeah. yeah. And it's still fun. It's I mean, so I get fun. to play it's a so super fun. girly girl. I knew. Which I would never have. Yeah. You know, being in real life. Well, you wouldn't have worn the dress. No, 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 I can't. I think the last time I wore a dress was 
Outfest 2015. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. remember, but okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's my straight brain. I don't. I, oh, you were wearing a dress. I, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of other girls there that <laughs> noticed you were wearing a dress. But I think what I also think is interesting is ha tell everybody how you're making a living right now. Um, ish, ish, selling my with the motorcycle. Oh yeah, I work in a motorcycle. Oh, and you should shop. talk about your paintings too. So I work at a um, a motorcycle shop, a little place called uh, Riot Cycles in Frogtown in Silver Lake. Um, turning old Hondas into cafe races. So I cool. work with some beautiful boys, two boys, yeah. Daniel and Bradley. Um, and I actually have been selling my artwork to make a living as well, which has been... It's pretty wonderful to be able to make money on yeah. things that you enjoy. It is. I did send you an email and ask you how much one was and you didn't get back to me, so we'll have to follow up on that. <laughs> I'll follow but, on that. <laughs> um, where can people find your artwork? Where can people find and take a look at it? And so you can, I have an Instagram called Twisted Rose, T-W-I-I-S-T-E-D Rose, Twisted Rose. Um, and that's pretty much where my artwork will be. I do have a page on Facebook, but I don't really use it. It's called Twisted Art with a double I as well. Um, but I'm going to end up making a website, I think. Yeah, I can help you with that. That would be wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Um, so uh, we're at 30 minutes. If you have a last question, ask it now or forever hold your peace or have forever hold your peace for a little while anyway, because I'm sure you'll have other opportunities to talk to Mandala. But um, uh, in the meantime, I did launch our Indiegogo campaign for Crazy Bitches, the web series, and it's at igg.me backslash at at backslash c B W E B C B Web. So C B W is a capital and E B is small. I don't know if that matters. Um, but I hope you go uh, contribute something. It doesn't matter. Five bucks, whatever it is. We need to keep building and building and building. So we, when we get to October 14th or 16th, there's enough money in the bank to shoot all seven episodes and um, see what happens. And I finished the script today. <laughs> pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to shooting. Yeah. It's so, pretty sexy yeah. too, don't you think? It is very sexy. Yeah. I decided that I, my goal was um, every episode would have sex, something sexy, or a murder. And some have all of it. <laughs> all three in one episode. All three episode. in one episode. <laughs> Almost all of them have pretty sexy stuff in it. But, um, but it's fun and the characters are evolved. I think they're all as you know, shades of gray, which is what I like to talk about. It's what I like to do is create characters that are full body. They're not just one thing or another. They're they're what we all are, which is layers of uh, confidence and insecurity and uh, love and hate and fear and vulnerability, and, vulnerability yeah. and all of that stuff. So, and I'll look forward to continue building that with you because I'm very, I really do love uh, rehearsal process is really important because that's where we really find the character and everybody starts, you know, settling into where they're going. And then when we get on set, we're just, then it's, it's subtle tweaks, you know, then it's just like, hey, next time let's try it this way. Hey, think about this when you're doing this, you know. Yeah. But the rehearsal process is like an incredible uh, high because it's just, we're all in it and you can see the characters mushrooming into, into this like real identifiable creatures and Anyway, I'm excited about it. Yeah. I hope we get there. <laughs> We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. I have a hundred percent faith. Yeah, exactly. So thank you for joining us. Um, check out Mandala's art because it's really good. It's really good. I'm I'm I would like to buy one of those pieces. I don't know where I'm gonna hang it because I have no room. But uh, but I still want to buy one. And um, and I will see you on Monday for Hot Tub with Buck Angel, no, Tuesday, 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 Hot Tub with Buck Angel, uh, which should be a no. very interesting conversation. He's a very dynamic man. And um, I thank you all. See you later.